This video shows you why no one can stop Anthony Davis and the Lakers. A clutch playoff performer ever since his days as a Pelican, AD's league best post scoring right now and clutch play has fueled the Lakers to a 2-0 series lead. So with the Brow averaging 34 points in the West Finals, you're about to see why Anthony Davis along with his electric Lake Show teammates are invincible right now. First, Hattie gives a great take on why the Lakers will win the West Finals in 6 or 7 games saying LA's more experienced roster with proven winners like LeBron, Rondo, Danny Green, JR, and McGee will push them over the top. Go see who I had between the Lakers and Nuggets after he finished this video. Appreciate every answer. The question's coming up for next video showdown. If it wasn't already, it's now extremely clear that Anthony Davis has the most polished postgame of anyone in basketball and has the best handles of any big man in the NBA by far. The first half of Game 2 saw Davis show off those qualities in dominant fashion. After baiting his defender with in and out behind the back and crossover dribbles, Davis somehow kept his balance and finished at the rim with elite craftiness. On this play, Jokic does an outstanding job staying in front of Davis, but a mesmerizing display of guard-like dribble combinations plus a beastly up and under finish from AD is enough to get it done. In addition to his polished scoring talent, the Lakers superstar's extremely high passing IQ makes it a nightmare to defend him, especially with the abundance of Lakers shooting spacing the floor for him. 90% of bigs on this drive slash post up to the basket and subsequent double team from Gary Harris would turn the ball over. Seeming like he's completely trapped, Davis rips through the double team and whips an under control bullet pass to Danny Green in the corner. It's those types of plays that make opposing players realize how special of a player they're competing against because after Davis dropped 34 in game one, trapping AD was the coaching adjustment made from Mike Malone. To see Davis completely obliterate that game plan must have been a punch in the stomach for the Nuggets, but given the Lakers have LeBron next to Davis, plus knockdown three-point shooters Contavious Caldwell, Pope, Danny Green, and Kyle Kuzma, the Nuggets could rarely bring a double team to AD. This was one of the few chances they had. The second half was where the brow really started to carry LA though. Here he drives into his jab step, crosses over to his left, hesitates like he's about to attack the rim, but pulls up to drain a smooth 18-foot jump shot. From your basic old-school jump hooks to revolutionary work from a big man on the perimeter, AD was exposing Nikola Jokic all game long. But the Serbian center kept answering and put the Nuggets in a position where they were two seconds away from evening the West Finals at one. And I don't know about you, but right after the beautifully drawn up pin down action from Frank Vogel, as soon as he released this shot after getting that great of a look, personally, I knew it was game over because the confidence and follow through he released the shot with was too spot on for him to brick. Davis finished with the final 10 points for the Lakers in game two of the West Finals and 31 points in total. And despite the comeback kids from Colorado making a typically ridiculous comeback with Jokic hitting clutch shot one after another, the Lakers withstood that run with Davis coming through as the go-to guy for them down the stretch. After the game, LeBron James called Davis his best teammate ever and later in an interview called him a superhero. In terms of what the man himself thought of his own performance, here's the best parts of the incredible post-game interview from the 27-year-old Anthony Davis. I want to take those shots. You know, as part of the legacy, I want those shots. I want the big-time plays. You know, and we're going to live with me that was me shooting the last, you know, game-winning shots, and obviously we win the Mama jerseys. Never want to lose in these jerseys. Never, you know, for JaVel and Dwight to switch roles and play on Jokic, you know, for me to get on them. How about this guy when he dunked it and the whole bench erupted? What were you thinking when he threw it down earlier? He's a GOAT. He's a GOAT. He's a real GOAT, man. We, we call him GOAT. I'll get to the Carew show and his incredible two-way production, but we can't gloss over the playing for Kobe Bryant storyline. It was confirmed by the Brow himself that he yelled Kobe after hitting that game winner that'll live on in history. The Lakers are now 3-0 in their black Mamba jerseys in these playoffs. Also, Coach Frank Vogel commented on AD's game winner after the game by saying, quote unquote, that's a shot Kobe would have hit adding icing on the cake to the Lakers pushing the Mamba mentality in their locker room. Here's what Frank Vogel has the Lakers saying before they enter a huddle. Bring it in. Mamba on three. One, two, three. Mamba. I know Davis talked about the incredible job that LA did defending Nikola Jokic postgame, but how about what they did to Jamal Murray? The Blue Arrow was lighting it up to say the least in the first two rounds, but the lateral quickness and athleticism of the GOAT Alex Caruso seems to be slowing Murray down. With two steals and a block, 
plus on the other end, nine points, including a smooth three-pointer, the GOAT's impact continues to be as clear as the top of his head. In the 18.4 minutes per game he played in the regular season, the Lakers were 9.8 points per 100 possessions better than their opponents. That was the best number on the team, better than James and Davis. And in the playoffs, the Lakers' best defensive lineups largely have been with Caruso on the court, as the GOAT has the second best individual defensive rating on the team. Amazingly, after playing in the G League a little over a year ago, Alex is now an integral leader to go along with being a key rotation player for a team that looks destined to win the NBA title. Alex's reputably elite teammates love playing next to him as veterans who've been perennial all-stars in their career like Rajon Rondo, plus of course LeBron and AD, have high praise for the White Mamba. After LA took a 2-0 series lead, King James said this about Alex Caruso, we know what we're gonna get out of him every single night, James said. It's not just about him making shots, we know he's gonna defend and he's gonna play at a level that he's capable of playing at and we all know that once he checks into the game every single night. We know what to expect out of him. Rajon Rondo said he's always believed Caruso's been a high IQ player, and watching him run through Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, and now Jamal Murray has only proved his toughness. Speaking of one of basketball's most respected minds, playoff Rondo's return to the lineup has made the Lakers that much more of a nightmare to defend. Another player who can handle the basketball and facilitate the offense by getting shots for other players has taken a ton of pressure off of LeBron. In the second round of the playoffs, Rajan averaged 11 points, 7 assists on miraculously efficient percentages. It just goes to show how his game reaches new levels once the games start to really matter. The man's an absolute gamer. It's just insane that in 8 less minutes on average than Rondo's received in his last 3 trips to the playoffs, he's still almost averaging a double-double. But if you aren't convinced by the numbers that Rajan turns into a special player in the postseason, then this ridiculously polished runner from behind the backboard should put you on the playoff Rondo bandwagon. Of course you now know about the brow Anthony Davis stepping up with the pressure on him. However, you can't forget that without the other member of this all-time great one-two punch in LeBron James going off for 20 points in the first half, LA wouldn't have even had a chance to win game two. That's the beauty of this Lakers squad though. When one top five player doesn't have his scoring rhythm, the other knows it's his time to take over. LeBron received some flack for only scoring 15 in game one, but what many people fail to realize is that he knew Davis has his scoring rhythm right now and intelligently let his co-star dominate to the tune of a blowout victory. Then when AD was keyed in on by the Nuggets defense in the first half, the next time out, James responded to that by scoring the first 12 points of the game. Scarily, LeBron was knocking down all of his shots, and the way in which he elusively baits defenders with those jumpers with both his body language and jab steps make him near impossible to stop when that shot's falling. From there, the King can obliterate you with his all-time great slashing ability, so Denver's overall defense is fairly overmatched here. Given the four players I just showed you a breakdown of in Davis, Caruso, Rondo, and James are supported by near 40% three-point shooters everywhere, most notably Caldwell, Pope, and Green, there's more than enough depth for LA to go the distance. But if you're loving these playoffs, be sure to hit subscribe because I'm going to be breaking everything down for y'all. From NBA stories to schematics, you're not going to want to miss the content I've got on the way. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you in next video.